Okay, so um, thanks very much. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with um, census microdata. So I'm kind of starting from the assumption that that many people won't know um, particularly about it, um, and it's a kind of an, a, a product that isn't kind of often associated with census in the broader possible terms. So um, what I'm going to cover today is what you can get to think about the types of analysis that you can do um, to discuss preparing the data um, and to talk about the kind of analysis that um, you might want to do. And then I've created um, a data set that you can have a look at and play around with. And I'll, I'll kind of demonstrate some of that to you before we let you loose on it. Um, <clears throat> and after that, I think we're over to kind of a little bit more about um, analysis and then a Q&A session. Um, I think before we really get going, it's worth saying that I'm focusing on the England and Wales microdata. Um, in terms of microdata for the UK census, there will be releases from the Northern Ireland and Scottish censuses in due time. And at some point, those will be harmonised into a single um, set of UK-wide census data. Now, there will clearly be issues um, available with that census data um, because we use different categories and the different um, regimes, the different statistical regimes. Um, so I think that's um, something you might want to pick up on later on if you're thinking about UK-wide analysis. So let's just get started now with what's on offer. So um, there are a number of data sets held in uh, by the UK Data Service. Um, we are the main repository for the safeguarded data here. Well, I think we're the only repository. The open access data, ONS also hold, and the secure access data is, via, is available via the secure service. So just to explain those access levels, open access means you can get at it without being registered with the UK data service. So a similar position to the census aggregate data. Um, the safeguarded access means you need to be registered with the UK data service. That's uh, extremely straightforward if you're in a UK higher education institution, um, you just register and uh, put in your address and you will be registered. And there are no additional considerations, no additional requirements around the safeguarded access to the individual and household data sets. For the secure access, you need to access them in a secure environment. You need to have been trained in and passed an accreditation to be able to access them. Um, and it's a different process. If we want to discuss that later on, we can. But I think from um, the point of view of looking at what's available, there's quite a lot available in the safeguard versions. So just to run through these different kind of individual levels data. So there's a 5% sample for combined local authority, which is the one we'll be looking at today. There's also a 5% safeguarded for region. that has an additional variable. There's an internationally positive one at the University of Minnesota um, that covers microdata from different all different countries who, who will deposit it. And then at household level, there's a 1% safeguarded sample, um, regional level that has 55 variables, and there's a 10% secure access local authority. And if you're interested in the household um, data, then we can talk about that later on. Okay, so just a reminder, if you have questions as we go along, pop them into the chat and we'll pick them up. So um, I'm going to go into this data now for me and I'll just show you the documentation. The slides do show you some of it. Um, so I've I've searched for this knowing the, the key number. Um, so I will stop sharing that and start sharing um, this screen that I've got here at some point. Okay, so I've already searched for this data set, which is the one we're talking about, the individual microdata sample. Um, so I'm just going to click on that. And I'm not at the moment logged in, so I would be treated, I would need to log in if I wanted to actually access the data. Um, so if you look here, we get some details about the data. Uh, we get the title, the study number, 
the access level and some further information down here, um, an abstract that links you into um, more about the, the sample itself, coverage and methodology, et cetera. Um, if we want to look at the documentation, um, we can see um, a set of different kind of issues here. So we get the, the, the data dictionary, we get a user guide from the ONS, um, which talks about the census microdata samples for England and Wales. That covers all of the different samples. Um, and it, there's some comparison of the kind of sampling ratios between different variables. So some of that stuff is quite useful. And I would suggest um, if you're relatively new to this or you're new, new to this um, variant of it, that you have, have a look at the documentation as a good starting point to get familiar. I'm just going to go back to the slides and run through those very quickly. So um, in effect, what this is what the file structure is underneath. And you can see there's documentation. I've gone for the SPSS version. There's also a Stata version. And I think some kind of tabulated version. Um, and you can kind of get at the documentation around the data dictionaries. So to move on from there, uh, I'll argue that straight away, Margaret. Um, I'll answer that straight away, Margaret. Um, no, we don't have anything about um, basically citizenship or uh, legal status within the country from the census. Uh, we have country of birth. We have something about when people arrived um, and um, ethnicity, but that doesn't cover um, the, the status that people live here under. Um, okay, so the types of analysis we can do here are, um, if you think of, if you've used the aggregate data so far um, and you've used the ONS version of the interface, then you will appreciate that this is quite a step forward from what we've had in the past. That in the past, we've had a set number of defined tables that we can access through NOMIS, through the UK Data Service. Um, for 2011 and before. And I just had a quick look at the state of the interfaces yesterday. So the NOMIS interface now has the variable filtering for 2021 that it had before. So you can locate those tables. But both them and the UK Data Service have so far decided that we can't um, work, produce an interface with a flexible table builder or custom, custom data set build a custom data set function of the ONS. Um, there's more development to go on the um, UK site um, and the Scottish data is starting to be loaded onto there. So there were things that will happen and they're likely to converge somewhere, but the ONS site does enable you to put variables in and to build up tables. So you can go quite a long way further than you could before um, into the spaces where you would have had to have commissioned tables but there are limitations, um, and those limitations um, can be overcome by using the uh, the aggregate data. Um, I'll pick that up again in a bit, Margaret. Yeah. Um, so it means you can do some exploratory analysis of, of kind of associations in the data as well. Um, there are four kind of household variables associated with deprivation all of which can be used to look at aspects of, um, to model aspects using logistic regression. So um, I will give an example of the output from that as well. Um, but results will depend on the type of variable. Um, there's not, there's no real scale variables in there unless you derive them. Um, so there's a few um, binary and nominal and ordinal variables that you can use to explain, um, to, to explore. But it does take you a long way further. Um, so having kind of decided that you think this data is worth looking at, we then have a set of tasks, I think, that because we're dealing with a large data set, so if you take the 5% sample, it's just over 3 million records. Um, so that's quite unwieldy to, to look at. So I would say, first of all, 
maybe the, the, is to define what it is you're going to look at, what variables and what records. Um, so you define what variables you're interested in. Maybe you're interested in specific geographic areas, so you'd want to filter out some of those areas, or you're interested in people um, in households, for example, or in communal establishments, so you filter out the others. Um, once you've selected those, then you might go through recoding the categories. So um, I'll give you a couple of examples in a minute. Um, and then what I have tended to do, um, though probably my computer would cope with it now, is to aggregate those into um, groups um, with counts and to use those counts as weights. So I'll go through that process quickly on the screen. Um, so first of all, getting the data, you need to access it. Um, you might filter out records you don't want. Um, and then I would suggest you load the file into a format that you can ma manipulate programmatically. And by that, I mean using kind of code of one form or another so you can get at the data set you want um, and you can reproduce that fairly straightforwardly so you don't have a, a kind of a set of issues that arise because um, the code you've done is not repeating um, because you're doing it manually. So here is an example of the first set of recoding here. So taking this data, uh, it come in, comes in five-year age, age bands. I've decided I want a pattern more like that on the left, which is those under 16, and then more or less 10-year age bands apart from that 16 to 24 one. Um, you may also need to derive variables, and, and there are some overlaps here. So if you look at... Um, social class as defined by the occupational social class and economic activity, you will find there will be overlaps in the categories. Um, and you may need to think about how you might combine those. Um, but in the example here, what I've done is because I want to see students separately, um, I've put in a flag for those who are students. And also you'll find that some of the things that you would like are not there. So for me, kind of in my previous an analysis, I've always found household composition, that is the kind of household that people live in, very useful. Um, it's not in the microdata this time, and it's not possible to derive it fully. You can get some categories. You can see where there are single people. Um, you can see where there are dependent children and where there are pensioners, but you can't get at that household composition. Um, so if you're looking at single variables that you know are in the data set, that's fine. If you're looking at deriving some that you've used in the past, have a, have a good look at them and see what happens. So having got that data recoded, this is like a, um, a picture of an Excel sheet I'll show you afterwards, but this looks very much like the SPSS as well. So for each of the variables, we've got a single row, which is a person, We've got a code which relates to um, the value, and that code is linked on the right to the descriptions. And for that combination of age, sex, disability, ethnicity, year of arrival, region, tenure, and household deprivation, there is a count of the number of people. Um, I think the one you're going to get is slightly different to this, but um, we'll have a look at that in a minute. So before we go into that, I'm just going to pick up on Margaret's question here. Um, I'm not sure, because the showman is only in um, as a code category in the Scottish release. Um, if it's been used as a writing category in England and Wales, it should be there in the small population data, which you can look at, but that's a pretty confusing data set to look at. Um, so I would suggest you can look at the detailed ethnic categories, um, which include the writing categories in England and Wales. So far, the Scottish release just has the high level category. So um, I was interested in, and I looked and there wasn't anything on showman there. Okay, so um, just before we go into this, I'm just going to, again, show you what it looks like and what I've kind of done with it myself. Uh, so you should now be able to see um, um, right, so here we're going across. We've got a set of microdata. Um, this is what you'll see when you open it. So you've basically got age, sex, uh, NS sec, which is the um, occupational social class, 
ethnic group, tenure, disability, year of arrival, health, housing deprivation, and highest level of qualification. Um, the minus eights are where a variable is missing and where a variable is missing. Um, and as you go down, you will see um, they're ordered in basically the order. So they all start off with the youngest people. And if we go further down, you will see the different age groups begin to go up. Um, that's just a feature of the way that um, the aggregation works. So what I've done then is to develop a pivot table. Um, and in this pivot table, I've put a, um, in the left-hand column, I've got ethnicity. Across the top, I've got tenure. I haven't done any tidying up about this, with this, so the missing values are still there. There's no descriptions. Um, I've done that all in a table over here. So if you look over here, what I've done is to eliminate or ignore the minus eight values. And for each of the category, ethnic categories, I've decoded them. So I've got some data over here, which gives me lookup routines that I can use to do that. Um, and I've decoded the tenure. So I can then say what percentage and number of people from each ethnic category are living in those particular tenures. And um, I've made this dynamic. So if I was to say I'm interested in those who uh, experience housing deprivation, so that's value one there, you will see that those numbers go off the wall. So, um, so I've not done that very well. This is a, a good sign. I thought I'd resolve that, actually. Um, let's try with the NSX. So let's have a look at the professional group. You can see those numbers shift. So that's what you can get at by playing with those variables. Um, and that's what we're going to uh, let you do for maybe 15, 20 minutes. And um, then we will come back into the group to kind of proceed with the rest. So I think Jill has put the link into the this and and depending on what you're you've got at home and how much time you want to play with this you can open it excel and do the kind of things i've done looking at tables that you could build um you could load it into a package like spss or stata um and look at the relationship between variables so i'll leave you with that till um maybe 22 and if you also want to take the opportunity to have a break or get a drink. I'm going to um, just get a drink now and I'll be back on screen in a few minutes. Okay, so I think I'll bring us all back together and, and kind of come back to this question uh, before we move on. So um, it was quite a broad question. So it's how do I get data that's available from the census? And let's just kind of step back and say, well, what data is produced by the census in England and Wales? And this is also mirrored in Scotland and Northern Ireland, though they are on different release timetables. So um, we are in a position, I think, in England and Wales where we're ahead of the um, release game. Um, Northern Ireland was the first release, but has a slower program for data going out. So the, the, there is a set of what we call aggregate data that is tied to local geographies. So those are counts or estimates um, around geographies like local authorities, wards, kind of the parliamentary constituencies, um, also around the statistical geography, um, uh, which output areas, lower super output areas, um, and then regions and countries, and kind of various other geographies will appear or have appeared, like health-based geographies and so on. So you can get those counts of data at those geographical levels from three places, um, from the UK data service. Um, if you go on and look for census aggregate data, you will get those tables. You can also get the boundary data to map those tables. NOMIS has the, um, the count data um, and has just recently introduced filtering so you can look for combinations of variables. Um, ONS has that data in a long list of tables, but also allows you to build um, a custom data set. Um, so I should have said alongside those, you've got a load of univariate data that comes from simple 
um, count data. So you would kind of say, what's ethnicity across these geographies? And it would tell you, and that would be the univet variant data, what's called topic summaries um, in ONS and no mis terms. Um, so they all have their benefits and disadvantages. I think in terms of development, the UK data service is migrating to new tools. So the filtering is not as developed as others, but it's likely to be in the future. Um, and um, so and you haven't got the same geographic filtering. Um, the output from no risk is probably the prettiest in that it's ready to use uh, in a tabular format, if that's what you want. Um, the ONS data, as I said, has the benefit of enabling you to put in your own variables. So it depends on what you're going to do. The challenge with the ONS and UK data service data at the moment is they're not in tabular format. They come out with data for each category within each variable. So you have quite a long list of data that you then need to do something with to tidy up. So those are the kind of core data that people would look for in a census, which is aggregate data, data and boundary data. Those are available for a combination of those three places. Um, I think the geographic data is only about available from ONS and the UK data service. The two other sets of products, the more specialized products, are the microdata. So this is what we're talking about here, the sample of data. Um, and you can get that from the UK data service, the safeguarded versions of that, from the UK data service if you're a registered user. And it is simply a matter of, of searching for census microdata. You might have some hiccups in finding it, but it is there. Um, the search is being improved because we put in a request to reorganize that data to some extent. And the other set of data that will be available um, is currently available as a bulk download is flow data, which is the data that comes from um, people having two separate addresses. So there's data for students with a term time and home time address. There's data for commuting um, for a, a kind of um, work-based commuting. Though you'd have to have a note of caution about that because this was done during the lockdown. Um, there's also data on people who've got second homes and so on. So um, having said that, I think it's not the easiest search, which I think is your last kind of response. Um, hopefully that will become more straightforward because the request is in to sort that out. But so for the flow data and for the micro data, you are dependent on the UK data service for the safeguarded versions. Um, and that's kind of what we're focusing on today. Um, if you, Okay, so hopefully those are kind of answered and we're... Okay, so it looks like some people have been experimenting with that. Um, if you have had problems with it and you want to talk about them, maybe we could pick those up at the end and, and come back to that. Um, hopefully that gave you a flavour of what you can begin to think about doing. I would say what I've given you is is <clears throat> a couple of steps away from what I'd need to do myself for my own analysis to be able to work with it because the missing data values are quite confusing. Um, so here's some things to think about. First of all, I think we've said this already, to access it, you need to be registered with the data service. Um, I said it earlier on, and I will kind of stress it again, that the documentation is quite important to help you understand the variables available. Um, think about whether the categories are right for what you want to do. Do you want to group them? Um, the example I used was age, but also within that data set, I've done the same with the um, occupational social class because I find the detailed categories um, are not relevant for what I'm interested in. They may well be relevant for other things. Um, I think you need to be aware that some categories will automatically exclude responses. So a lot of those categories around kind of occupation, economic activity, etc., are only for people of working age. So they will, in effect, remove you on people from the analysis. So you'll get quite different pictures. Um, um, yeah, one of the ways around that, and I think is useful if you're trying to think of experiences of, of different types of deprivation, is to take the attributes of the household reference version, which are also included in the microdata. So there are things there like occupational social class, I think ethnicity, age, sex, etc. 
<coughs> I couldn't guarantee all of them, but, um, but there are some, and I've used some of those in other analysis. Um, and the final thing to say is this geography is limited to combined local authority. And what they mean by combined local authority is there's a population boundary, which I think is 120,000, which means there's only around 270 local authorities in there and they are combined. So if, if you're interested in places with smaller populations, then you will be quite constrained in what you can see for most um, local authorities. So if you're looking at urban areas, if you're looking at all of the London borders apart from the city of London, um, if you're looking at counties, you will find you've got the kind of um, data you need. But if you are looking at smaller district authorities with smaller populations, uh, you may well lose that specificity of the local authority you're interested in. Um, so there is a, an SPSS script on the shared zip file that you can use to create the kind of data um, that I've generated. Um, I did uh, experiment with ChatGPT to get this to convert to R and Python for colleagues. Um, I've, I've got a reasonable understanding of R and it was it was it looked like it was probably okay, but um, not very elegant. Um, I don't know Python well enough to know, so I pass them over on check. Um, but you can go ahead and um, kind of look at that. Um, and I think the the big thing that happens when you take that data outside and put it into something like Excel in the way I have done is that you need to take those variable descriptions and categories across to be able to work with them. Um, so if you do it completely within SPSS and you create an SPSS file or a Stata file, you will inherit the metadata, i.e. the variable descriptions and categories. If you take it outside of that environment, um, you won't necessarily inherit them and you may have to generate them again. Um, it's just an additional step. I mean, I wouldn't say it's, it's challenging, but it does take time. Um, and I think the kind of moving on to thinking about modeling, I felt a little bit first of all, but there's a limited number of potential dependent variables. Um, there's no scale variables unless you generate them. So you'd have to generate them from some set of theoretical assumptions about them because there's no kind of attitude questions in there that you would combine particularly. The census is very much about kind of um, hard-nosed facts rather than what people think or what they believe. So there's no real measures um, there's subjective health, um, which you might think about modeling would be an ordinal category. Um, there are bin binary variables covering household deprivation, so education, employment, health and housing. Be aware of the definition of those. For education, that means nobody has level two qualifications or above within the household. For employment, it's basically worklessness. For health, it's either long-term limiting illness or poor health, self-defined poor health by at least, for at least one member of the household. And for housing, it's overcrowding by the bedroom standard, sharing of kitchen or bathroom, or um, not having central heating. Um, and some attributes are held in more than one place, so you need to resolve those duplications, or you could get a mess up in your regression. Um, in the meantime, I'll say that within this sampling, there are, there are no weights generated. Um, in analysis I've done, I have never really used weights with this data. Um, if you look at the um, comparison with variables, it does explain how the um, different variables match with the data. So you could generate your own weights in theory if you felt a group was underrepresented. Well, it's not something I've done. Okay, so let's have a look at what comes out then. Um, so I've, I've done this example looking at household deprivation. So I've taken age in those bands I showed before, sex, disability, occupational social class grouped into three, ethnicity, um, year of arrival in the UK, the decade since 1971, and tenure. And I've done that for England and Wales and for London. So I've kind of separated out London. Um, and I've identified using odds ratios. For those of you who aren't familiar, um, logistical regression is based on a binary outcome and you can use it to model the chances of something happening. 
So, and in effect, you get an odds ratio of a particular characteristic. So, if it's like if it's the same as the reference point um, for a group, it would the point would be one. As it goes above one, it would be um, more likely to happen to that group uh, or that characteristic. And then finally, the statistical significance of that result. Um, Okay, so if we take these, so taking the reference group of those under 16, um, the in England and Wales, the 16 to 29 year olds are slightly more likely to be housing deprived. Um, all other groups are less likely increasing with age. In London, all other groups are less likely to be housing deprived, and again, that increases with age. Um, but men are slightly more likely to be um, housing deprived on women in England and Wales, but no significance in London. And then if we look at the occupational social class, again, we can see some kind of hierarchy um, where it's more likely for those in intermediate and routine jobs, um, somewhere in the middle for those who have never worked on long-term unemployed um, and students kind of different in England, Wales to London. Um, I suppose the, the ones I tend to have looked at probably more are the ethnic group differences because that's been my kind of um, area of interest. And you can see some quite stark differences here, which are probably not surprising to anybody who's familiar with the area. But if you look, for example, at Pakistani and Bangladeshi, both more than five times more likely. Um, gypsies and travellers, three times more likely. Um, the results in London are, are surprisingly less, I suppose, because we think of the housing crisis as being uh, kind of concentrated in London. But maybe the message here is that though it's more con concentrated in London, it's not so discriminatory. Um, I, it doesn't affect particular groups more. So if you look at the African group, there's a kind of nearly four times more likely in England and Wales, but only three times more likely in London. Um, if we look at tenure, then again, you can see what you might kind of expect to see, which is uh, for social renting, um, much more likely to be housing deprived, not quite so much in the private rented sector, and also much more likely when people are living rent free. And um, a similar pattern around year of arrival. Okay, so um, I think we've kind of raced through that a bit. And I think it's over to you now for issues you'd like to raise and discuss. Appreciate we've kind of um, had a bit of a whistle stop, so I'm happy to go back to discuss the kind of variables and data that are available if you would like to do that more. Um, I suppose a principle I was principles I was trying to get across is that this is potentially um, a valuable data set if you if you're bumping up against the limits of what you can do with the census. Given the size of it, it's very powerful, so you do tend to get results. Um, when you model with logistic regression, but there are some limitations on the things you can model. And if you have kind of offline questions you'd like to answer, then just email me. My email address is there.